afternoon and welcome to another day I'll be in the barn I just had to do some chores around the house and uh, the wife had to go get some medicine for the father-in-law so I got to come out in the barn uh, it's a beautiful day outside and I wish I were golfing but I'm not anyhow we're back on that uh, Bronco 2 getting these pads off of the uh, axle it's a three and a quarter inch axle what I decided to do since I couldn't get them off there it was taking too long take the plasma cutter and cut them off grind it down flush repair anything that I need to on the axle and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and build some some new mounts and then put them over where they need to be so that's what's coming next so I gotta get the plasma cutter set up and uh, then I can start cutting those off the reason I wasn't using the plasma cutter yesterday is because it's not mine my buddy was at work so I had to wait for him to get off work and uh, when he got off work last night I went over and got his plasma cutter so I could use it today so let's see if we can make a mess I'm probably right in the way of the camera Try to cut my chisel in half so I can get it out. Alright, there's half. Alright, so I cleaned the slag off with my chisel, just tapping it. I found some flap disc. I got plenty of flap disc, so I guess that's what I use to clean these up with. Uh, I'll get started on this one here and move on to the other one when this one's done. make you watch me do the rest of it I'm gonna go ahead and finish cleaning that one up clean this one up and then go on from all right I got both sides cleaned up as you can see them lines in there that was my fear when I was cutting it off with the 
grinder yesterday that I'd get in too deep start cutting into the axle so I'm gonna have to take and uh, get the MIG welder hooked up and uh, weld those grooves in because I don't want uh, any weak points in this axle and I said before my buddy cut his off with the plasma cutter got too deep and it was leaking oil and we tried to weld it up and you know when oil gets in a weld it just don't weld so I want to make sure that we uh, have enough heat to make a good weld but not too much heat that we burn a hole in it so that's what I'm going to do next And you know that's what they make a grinder for. Alright, I'm happy with that. Probably won't have to mess with the one on the outside because the pad is going to be moved inside. So I'll probably just leave that one alone. We clean up the inner one to make sure that if the pad's going to hit there, that uh, it's nice and smooth surface. Alright, so you can see the original pad is five inches long for the uh, leaf spring pad. And I'm going to make my own. It's five inches by about oh two and three eighths. So I'm going to make my own. I'm going to change it to seven inches long and probably two and a half because that'll be easier to measure. So I got some three eighths, uh, or excuse me, some quarter inch flat stock, which is what this is here, what these were originally made out of. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it, mark it, uh, weld it, and uh, then they'll be ready. So as you can see, while I was over getting uh, my buddy's plasma cutter, I borrowed his chop saw as well. So. I got that, like I said, I got the uh, flat bar, it's four inches wide, and uh, I'm going to cut these at seven inches a piece. Alright, in between getting my tape measure and, and coming back over here, I decided I'm going to make them six inches instead of seven. Three inches in the center hole would be perfect. I just cut right here for my guy. Gotta do that a couple more times, and I gotta cut my two and a half inch piece. 
and I can uh, get them all set up, drill my holes. I only need to drill the holes in the two and a half inch piece, but then I'm going to take and mark the radius for a three and a quarter inch axle on there and cut it out with the plasma cutter. So, show you what's going on after I get the rest of the pieces cut. Okay, I'm sure you remember that I said that the original was two and three eighths wide and I said I was going to make this one two and a half. Well, I lied. This is also going to be two and three eighths because what I'm going to do is take the piece I just cut that's four inches wide and cut it right down the center with an eighth inch uh, blade there. It's going to take an eighth out. I'm going to cut this piece uh, a sixteenth off of each side. So it's going to be an inch and fifteen sixteenths. So this will be a two and uh, seven sixteenths wide because I'm going to put it in between the two outer halves like that. That's going to give me a half an inch. So you got one and fifteen sixteenths and a half an inch is going to give you uh, two and seven sixteenths. Well, that's how we're going to do that. Now if I can find the center here, which is two inches, so it shouldn't be hard. And uh, put my blade right on the line. An inch and fifteen sixteenths. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll go to the next step. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is clean these couple pieces up. They are going to be in the center. And then I'm going to get them nice and lined up. I'm going to tack them together so they don't slip. Take them over to the drill press. After I mark them, drill the center hole in them. Then I'm going to take the side pieces. I'm going to clean those up, tack them together. Mark my radius. And then I'll take the plasma cutter and cut them out. First thing I'm going to do is just knock off the edges off of this. Actually what I'm going to do while I'm here is clean up all of them. The reason I made them this wide is because I actually wanted to give it a little bit more lift off the axle back there, so that's why I made them this wide. Okay, so I started building my uh, perch pads for the back leaf springs, and uh, I've got a hole drilled in the center, got the radiuses cut for the axle. I'm welding it together now. Like I said, I was going to put the uh, the flat plate inside of the two outer plates in order to uh, give it the width that it needed but because I did that I went ahead and tacked it on here and tacked it underneath but I ground grooves here between the two plates so that I could get some filler weld down inside there and it probably would have been fine the other way I'm just going to make sure that there's good penetration there by putting in a bevel and filling it up with weld. That makes me confident that that's going to hold better. My grind is flat at the top, so the leaf springs will sit down on there flat. At least I know I got penetration down into the both pieces of metal, not just running over the top of a crack where the two pieces butted together. Ooh, that's hot when you got a hole in your glove.
So this plate here is on top is for the other piece. I just put it in there to hold the uh, distance while I welded this up. Find something to grab it with. So I can put it in the vise and grind that top off. Try the next one, I'll bevel it before I even start to weld it, then there won't be the grinding. I'll uh, keep cleaning this up and then I'll get back to you. Okay, this is what I decided to do since I didn't have any grinding disc. I used my burr on the end of my uh, die grinder here. And it was working really good on one side. I got it all done. And then it wasn't working so good. I couldn't figure out what it was. Until I said, oh yeah, my welder's on. So I had to unplug my welder and plug my air compressor back in because it was very low on pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this other side. one made. I have a piece of metal in my finger. I'm using that stupid burr. There's the top of the first one. If it's cooled off I'm gonna go ahead and take that brace off that I put in there and then uh, start on the second one. All right, so here we have it here. Let me get it some light on it. Here we have it. It's got a nice three and a quarter inch radius on it, both sides, welded inside. Now, I'm gonna put a little piece across here, I'm sure when I'm done, before I'm done, on both ends just to keep it steady. And I'm gonna cut angles on here like this to take some of that mass off of the corners there so they don't catch on nothing. I'll go ahead and probably cut it and round it with the plasma cutter just so it doesn't catch on anything before I end up putting them on. Anyway that's one done. I'll go ahead and do the second one. Now like I said on this one I'm just gonna go ahead and bevel the edges on both sides and then also on the bigger pieces I'll bevel those edges so that I get good penetration there so it'll make me feel better. Yeah, that looks good. That's about half the thickness. Got a nice bevel on it. Flip it over, do the other side. Again, like I said, I beveled about half the thickness, and now my phone's ringing. Okay, I got the top beveled. I got it secured on the back. I'm going to go ahead and run a bead down both sides here, and then uh, flip it over and hit the inside. Uh, I know that running downhill ain't the best weld. It's not completely downhill. It's an angle. Sure makes it lay in a lot nicer, so that's what I'm doing.
Oh, she's a beauty. She's a little hot. Well, we'll let that one cool down. And we'll pop those uh, pieces off that we're holding it straight. Well, I just wanted to show you that uh, we got the springs on there. They're not on there tight or anything. We got the uh, pads on there, the perch pads, and uh, they're just tacked in one spot just so they don't move. We'll get the engine and transmission set back on here. We'll have to figure out what angle we need our rear end at. So um, now we can roll it out in the front part of the shop. So we have room to get it in there and and do that. But uh, my stepson's getting married tomorrow, so I won't be doing that. And Kevin says he's got work in his own pole barn that's more important than mine. So I thank him for coming over today and helping me with this. So until next time, when we'll be in the barn.